This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's go through and have a look at cash management. Essentially, this section about cash management is asking you to prepare a cash flow forecast. So we prepared a cash flow statement in one of the earlier sessions, way back right at the very start of the course. Seems like a long time ago now, doesn't it? I've chatted to you an awful lot since then. Uh, this is very, very similar in that we're thinking about cash. We're not thinking about profitability because that's the key thing, remember, isn't it? Profits does not equal cash flow. OK, you can be profitable, but you may not be generating cash. You could be loss making, but you could actually be generating cash. So it's important from a cash perspective that we know where the cash is coming from where the cash is going to, not just from a, an annual perspective, but on a month by month perspective, because it's going to be really important, isn't it, to know that will there be any particular months of the year whereby we have a shortfall in cash? Because if we have a shortfall in cash, we may have to borrow short term to go through there and fund the business for the next few months. But if we have an excess of cash for a few months, maybe what we can do is we can invest that cash and generate more of a return, can't we? Because if you just got cash and it sat around doing nothing, it's not earning you a return. So it, it's imperative, isn't it? It's so fundamentally important that we know when we have cash and when we don't have cash. OK, so what we're going to go through and do there is prepare a cash flow forecast. OK. Uh, so what have we got? It's a standard, if you like, pro forma. OK, uh, learn it if you so wish. I just don't think it would be all that useful if you learned it in its entirety. Uh, but, but what we've got there is we have the inflows, the outflows and the movement. So remember, the cash flow statement looked at the operating, investing and financing activities. None of this nonsense here in your cash flow forecast. This is purely a management accounting exercise, isn't it? So we look at the inflows, we deduct the outflows to get you your overall movement and cash balance, isn't it? The key thing there is where do the inflows come from? Where do the outflows go to? And where do you then end up with that movement? Because once you've got the movement, you can then go through that and work out the closing balance. And you can then determine whether you have a surplus or a deficit of funds. Okay. Uh, the inflows, usually the, the easier ones to calculate, uh, come from cash sales uh, and your cash from your credit customers. So if you make a sale within the month or look at your total sales, some of it will be for cash. Some of it will be for credit. The, the key issue there is those credit sales. How much of those credit sales do you receive this month? How much do you then receive next month? So we might need to go through there and do a little bit of a working and we'll see that in a moment in terms of your outflows the main outflows do come from your your operating activities don't they in terms of purchasing your goods so again with your purchases you can look at your cash purchases but don't forget as well that you may make purchases on credit if you make purchases on credit do you pay those suppliers this month or do you pay them next month so again We'll need to have a little bit of a working there to work out the payments to our suppliers. Uh, you've then got cash expenses, uh, capital expenditure. There may be a particular month where you make a big investment in some capital expenditure. So a big project that's ongoing. You've also got there your interest and your tax. However, do just note that when you're looking at your outflows, remember that they will go through there and exclude any non-cash items. So the prime non-cash item that you do not include is depreciation. The same process as depreciation is your amortization. So again, that's a non-cash expense, isn't it? But charged on intangibles as opposed to tangibles and then don't forget as well you also have is it your profit or loss on disposal again that's a non-cash item so you do not include the profit or loss 
but you would include the proceeds, wouldn't you? Okay, there we go. Once you've got your inflows, you can total those up. You can total up your outflows, net them off. Take your net balance, adjust it with the opening balance to get the closing balance, and then don't forget that whatever your closing balance is, is then the opening balance in the next month. Okay, there we have it. So that's the process. That That's the idea. What's going to go through and be important now, isn't it, is to go through there and understand how we go through and calculate those numbers. So we'll go through there first of all and look at the cash receipts from the credit customers. So if you know what your sales are for a particular month, you will be able to work out what the cash sales are from the information and therefore as well the credit sales because total sales is cash sales plus credit sales, isn't it? Okay. Once you've then got your credit sales, you then need to look at when the receipt of the cash is. Okay. Is it in the month? Is it in the following month? Or is it even then? in the month following that. It's all about following instructions. It's a little bit like making things out of Lego. Okay, uh, you've got the instructions. It tells you what bricks to place were. And then at the end of it, it all looks like what it should look like. Okay, there we go. So let's go through, have a look at it. Use example number one to play around with. Uh, it says there to calculate the cash inflows for January and February, okay. So we're going to start off with our sales figures, look at what's for cash, look at what's for credit. Once we've got the credit sales, we can then look at when the cash receipts arise. So we're told about our sales in December. They were 10,000 and they're going to increase by 10% each month from the start of the year. So they're going to increase by 10% for January and 10% for February. 90% uh, of the sales are on credit. So that must then mean that 10% are for cash. And the instructions that were given is that 60% are in the month and 40% are in the month following. Okay. But the key bit is that they are on the sales on credit terms, aren't they? Okay. So you've got to be very careful there that you don't incorporate. Is it the cash sales? So what we've got there is if we go through there and piece it all together uh let's look at the months so was it the december january and february so we're only asked for the cash inflows from jan and feb but we might need the information from december to help us as well so what we start off with is we look at the sales we were told the sales were ten thousand, weren't they and they were going to increase by 10% each year. Okay. So is that 11,000 in Jan? And is it 12,100 in Feb? Okay. Uh, of those sales, we can then work out what the cash sales are. So they were 10%. So is that 1,000? 1, 1,100. And 1, 2, 10. OK, the numbers that I'm interested in that are your cash sales, aren't they? OK, because we're looking at January and February. So if we're looking at my cash inflows. Oh, that's an awful straight line, isn't it? That's much better as if I need a ruler. There's January. There's February. If we take our cash sales, you have one one hundred and one two ten. Okay, excellent. There we go. Uh, key bit that you've got now is you need to work out is it your cash from your credit sales. So that's where you need yourself a bit of a working, isn't it? So what we've got there. Back to our working. Uh, if we're looking at, is it the credit sales? That's the remaining 90%, isn't it? Boop, boop, boop. The eleven thousand times 90% nine. Oh, that nine nine hundred. I know it was nine nine hundred. Just wanted to double check. Don't want to make any mistakes. And then in February, is it ten 
8.90. Okay, so that's what the credit sales are. That's not necessarily when we receive the cash. The cash we get 60% in the month and 40% the following month. Okay, so what we've got there is we get 60% in the month. So we get, is it 5,400 is it the 5,940 as I take 60% of the 9,900 and 60% of 10,890 is 6,534 okay again the only figures that I'm really interested in are the 5940 and the 6534, but until you get fully competent at this, work it for every month. Okay, don't try and take any shortcuts. What then happens is that you then get 40% that arises in the following month. So if we take this 9,000 credit sale in December, 40% of that is going to arise in January isn't it okay so 40% of the cash we get in the following month similarly with the 9900 we've got the is it the 3960 that figure there that we have it is what we receive in February isn't it okay so what you've got there is now the cash inflows in January and February. So if I add those two together and those two together, does that give me in January? Is it nine five four zero? And is it ten four nine four? Okay, there we go. So what I could do there was it ten. Four nine four was it nine five four zero? Uh, if we total them up, does that give me ten six forty? And is it eleven seven oh four? Okay, yeah, quite a lot to go through and work and consider. You really do need to think it through slowly and methodically, but there's nothing too much there to try and challenge you. I think you'll find the cash purchases and the credit purchases that we have afterwards that that little bit more of a challenge. OK, but there you go. That's going through and, uh, and looking at the cash inflows perspective. OK, if we just advance it on before we look at a big overall example. Uh, and have a look there at your payments to suppliers. Uh, as I said, I, I believe that, that this is a little bit more of a challenge. Okay. Uh, what you can do there is you can take your sales information. So like we saw in that previous example. And then from that, you can work out your cost of sales using your cost structures, whether that's uh, gross margins or cost plus, okay, markups on cost. Uh, because what you've got there, you can go through there and then take that cost of sales figure, taking your stock holding policy, so how much stock you have at the beginning and the end of each month, because you will budget on how much to hold, you can then go through there and work out a purchases figure, okay. Once you've got your purchases figure, again, some of it will be for cash, some of it will be there on credit and then those credit purchases you can then look at when we make the payments okay so it's all very sequential in terms of your cash management and looking at your cash flow forecast take the sales and use that to work out the cash sales the credit sales and the cash receipts once you've got those figures you can then take the sales to work out cost of sales once you've got your cost of sales you can work out purchases once you've got your purchases, you can think about cash purchases, credit purchases, and think about the cash flow impact therein. Okay. Sounds a lot, but let's just have a look at the example and see how you get on. Okay. So it wants the cash payments to credit suppliers. 
So I'm not worried about your cash payments just as direct cash purchases. Okay, it's looking there at your credit suppliers again for two months. Is it there January and is it February? Okay, you can see there that we have exactly the sales policy or the same sales policy as before. 10,000 in December and 10% increase for each year, uh, for each month from the start of the year. Forget about that. Let's focus on, on the, the cost of sales because now once you've got your sales, you can work out your cost of sales. So if you've got a gross profit margin of 40%, then you know that your cost of sales must be equal to 60% of those sales, mustn't it? Okay. You can then use those cost of sales, knowing that opening plus purchase less closing gives you your cost of sales figure. Well, if we know that inventory is at 20% of the following month's sales, then we can use those figures to work out our purchases because we know what the opening and the closing inventory is. And then the suppliers are paid in the month following. Okay. So whatever we work out as the purchases for December will be paid in January. January's will be paid in February. Okay. So uh, let's go through, have a play around with it. Again, before you go all clever and gung-ho, do everything for each month given within the scenario. So December, January, February. Uh, what we've got there again was our sales, wasn't it? And our sales were 10, 11, and was it 12, 100? Okay. Uh, we know that your gross margin is 40%. So your cost of sales has to be 60%, doesn't it, of your sales. Okay. Uh, and then what you've got is you need to look at, is it your opening inventory? and your closing inventory okay so what you've got the information within the question is that your inventory are at 20 percent of the following month sales so our closing inventory is 20 percent of january sales so that's 2200 therefore that must be the opening inventory for January. So your closing inventory is 20% of the following month sales, isn't it? Okay. Here in February, the following month sales are 12,100. 20% of that are at 2,420. So in February, you will have that, is it 2, 4, 20? Uh, you've just got a bit of an issue, haven't we? Uh, what is the opening inventory for December? Well, the opening inventory for December will have been the closing inventory for November, won't it? And November's inventory will be 20% of December's sales, wouldn't it? Okay. So what you can see, is that the opening inventory is 20% of your current month sales, isn't it? Okay. Everybody happy with that? Let's just repeat it just in case. Uh, if we want December's opening inventory, that will be the closing inventory from November. November's closing inventory is 20% of the following month's sales. The following month's sales will be December's. So November's closing inventory is 20% of the 10,000, which is two which must give us the opening inventory for December of 2000, which is essentially 20% of this month's, if you like, sales. Okay, makes sense? Yeah, excellent. So what we've got now is we just need to rearrange things a little bit, don't we? Because if you're thinking about cost of sales, that's your opening plus purchases, less closing, gives you your cost of sales, doesn't it? 
So we just need to rearrange it, don't we? Because what we need to work out now is your purchases figure. So to work out your purchases, you're going to have to add your closing inventory to cost of sales, aren't we? And deduct your opening inventory. Okay, excellent. So purchases is cost of sales plus closing less opening, isn't it? Okay, you know, if you think about your opening inventory, that can't have been purchased within the month, can it? It must have been purchased within the previous month. So we need to remove it. Your closing inventory is there at the end of the period. So it must have been bought in this accounting period, i.e. in this month. So what we've got there is if we're going to go through then and work out your purchases, as I struggle to write a straight line. Uh, so what have we got? 6,000 less 2,000 plus 2,200 gives me 6,200. And then in January, that gives me 6, 8, 20. I obviously can't work out anything for February because for February, I would need March's sales figures. Again, those figures are then paid in the following month. So whatever we've calculated as December's purchases will be paid in January. And January's purchases will be paid in February. Okay. Uh, again, as they are outflows, make sure that you put them in brackets when you show them on your cash flow forecast. Okay. There we go. They're the basics. They're the essentials, the fundamentals, whatever you wish to call it. What we'll do in the next session is we'll pull it all together with a big fantastic example okay enjoy <laughs>